Soweto, Johannesburg's black sister city of one million people, has erupted in an orgy of pillage and murder within 36 hours of the start of a march by 10,000 pupils in protest against Afrikaans as a medium of instruction. 29 people were dead and 250 injured. What makes the Soweto uprising different is that for the first time you see the African, instead of being simply a victim, beginning to assume the role of the initiator of political action, both in the streets and on the screen. Towards the end of 76, I was getting a lot of distraught letters out of Soweto from people who were saying, uh, this thing is not, this revolution, if you like, is not being understood, it's not being reported correctly. What started as a peaceful protest degenerated into a rampage in which filthy elements are suspected to have become involved. The police refused to comment to S.A. Mirror, saying the matter was being investigated at a higher level. My central feeling was that I must try to get back and I must do a film about Soweto, which is a statement from the people of Soweto about themselves. And that was the starting point. This was my office until a few weeks after the 16th of June. And the police appeared at the top, just a little above the trees you see over there. Since June last year, 229 people have been killed, 2,599 injured in Johannesburg Black Townships. And these are the figures given by the South African police. United Nations estimates are over a thousand dead. In Soweto, their graves are unmarked. Nine miles away in Boysens, a white district of Johannesburg, even a cat deserves a headstone. Going back to South Africa 15, 16 years later to make that trilogy was a confrontation with South Africa and a confrontation with oneself. And one was looking, one was looking at one's own roots. It was a very personal journey.